Japanese culture is known for its strict adherence to rules and customs, and this is no exception when it comes to their education system. You may be surprised to discover that there are some truly unique and surprising rules that exist within Japanese schools. From strict uniform regulations to designated cleaning duties and even limitations on how students can wear their hair, the list goes on. In this video, we will explore 20 Japanese school rules that you won't believe actually exist. Prepare to be amazed and gain insight into the fascinating world of Japanese education. Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in to our channel. Before we start today's video, we would love it if you could leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos. Thank you so much. Number 20. No makeup allowed. In Japan, where the culture is more conservative than the generally liberated West, most schools forbid students to wear any makeup, even light makeup. This is primarily due to the emphasis on uniformity and modesty in Japanese schools. The education system in Japan places great importance on discipline, harmony, and unity among students. Uniforms play a significant role in fostering a sense of equality and minimizing school disparities among students. In line with this philosophy, many schools discourage or outright prohibit students from wearing makeup. The rationale behind this rule is to ensure that students present themselves in a standardized, natural manner, free from distractions or potential conflicts arising from differences in appearance. However, there are also several institutions in Japan, mainly those that cater to international and international students, that allow the application of light makeup. Number 19. No bleached or permed hair. Japanese high schools have strict guidelines regarding hair color and style. These regulations are often enforced to promote uniformity and conformity among students. However, some students and parents argue that these restrictions infringe upon students' personal freedom and self-expression. One of the most common hair color and style regulations in Japanese high schools is a ban on bleached and permed hair. This regulation is often justified by the argument that bleached and permed hair can be disruptive to the school environment and distract from student studies. To enforce this regulation, some high schools in Tokyo request certification from students that their hair is real or in its natural state. This means students need to prove that their hair color and texture are not artificially altered through perming or bleaching. This certification requirement has become so common that almost half of Tokyo's high schools have adopted this practice. As years pass by, more and more students have begun voicing their opposition to these regulations and have actively challenged this rule. Some argue that these restrictions are outdated and discriminatory, and that they should be abolished. Number 18. White undergarments are a must. In Japan, some schools require students to wear white underwear. This requirement is listed as a mandatory part of the dress code in more than half of the high schools and junior high schools in Nagasaki Prefecture. Schools have the authority to check what color underwear students are wearing, and some have employed extreme methods to ensure compliance, such as teachers pulling up bra straps or entering the changing room while girls change for PE class. These rules have raised concerns about invading students' privacy and potentially violating their rights. Some people believe that these rules are outdated and discriminatory, while others believe that they are necessary to maintain order and discipline in schools. Recently, a school in Saga Prefecture came under fire after teachers asked female students to lift their shirts and male students to unbutton their uniforms to check if they were wearing white underwear. The school apologized for the incident, but the incident has raised concerns about the boundaries between school regulations and personal privacy. Number 17. All students are required to clean. Japanese schools require students of all ages to clean their classrooms and other school spaces. This practice is rooted in the belief that children should learn to take responsibility for their environment and develop good character traits such as respect, kindness, and compassion. While this practice may seem strange to some people, it is widely accepted in Japan. Students are taught to clean up after themselves and pick up any trash around the classroom from a young age. This responsibility extends to high school, where most institutions do not employ custodians or janitors. Instead, high school students are responsible for cleaning their classrooms and even the common toilets. There are several benefits to this practice. First, it helps to keep schools clean and sanitary. Second, it teaches students the importance of responsibility and teamwork. Third, it helps to instill a sense of pride in students for their school community. 
Of course, there are also some potential drawbacks to this practice. For example, some people argue that it is unfair to ask students to clean up after themselves, especially when they are already paying tuition. Additionally, some people worry that this practice could lead to students being overworked or stressed. What are your thoughts on this? Please let us know in the comments below. Number 16. Separate Indoor and Outdoor Shoes Japanese students wear separate indoor and outdoor shoes to keep their schools clean and hygienic. This practice is rooted in the Japanese cultural value of cleanliness and maintaining a pristine environment. Upon entering a Japanese school, students are required to change from their outdoor shoes to designated indoor shoes, called uwabaki. This helps to minimize the spread of dirt, germs, and debris from outside. There are several benefits to this practice. First, it helps to keep the indoor areas of the school clean and free from outdoor dirt. This creates a more pleasant and hygienic learning environment for everyone. Second, it helps to reduce the amount of cleaning that needs to be done. Third, it teaches students the importance of responsibility and cleanliness. Number 15. No Substitute Teacher In Japan, when a teacher cannot attend class for any reason, the responsibility of overseeing the class typically falls on the students themselves. This practice is rooted in the Japanese value of fostering a sense of self-discipline and independence among students. By entrusting students with the task of running the class, it encourages them to take ownership of their learning and develop skills such as leadership and responsibility. Of course, some students still choose not to study or revise their notes, but they know their boundaries. This approach to covering classes in the absence of a regular teacher is unique to Japan, and it is a reflection of the country's strong emphasis on education and student responsibility. It is a practice that has been in place for many years, and it has been shown to be effective in helping students to develop the skills and knowledge they need to succeed in school and beyond. Number 14. Morning Greetings In most schools around the world, teachers simply walk into class with their materials and start their lessons. However, in Japan, students greet their homeroom teachers with a formal ritual that begins with the class representative standing up and saying karitsu, everybody stand to attention, followed by rei, bow, and finally chakaseki, sit down. This ritual is significant because it fosters respect between teachers and students, while also maintaining clear boundaries. The role of the class captain or class leader in initiating the morning greeting is important because it demonstrates their leadership skills and their commitment to the class. While some teachers may act friendly with their students, respect is never forgotten in their relationship. The morning greeting ritual plays a vital role in maintaining this balance. Number 13. Susumida. Japanese schools are considered to be second homes for students, where they spend a significant amount of time. It is heartbreaking to hear news about students being harmed or killed in their own schools. While assailants are not common in Japanese schools, some institutions have implemented a unique way to protect students from harm, the susumida. The susumida is a traditional Japanese weapon that consists of a long pole with two curved prongs at the end. It was originally used by law enforcement and castle guards, but is now used to protect students from potential predators. The susumida is stored strategically throughout school buildings near entrances or designated safe areas. In the event of an intruder or threatening situation, trained staff members can quickly access the susumida and use it to immobilize or disarm the individual without causing severe harm. It is still disheartening that students need to protect themselves when they go to school. However, the susumida provides a non-lethal means of self-defense and restraint, which is a valuable tool for Japanese schools. Number 12. Bukitsudo. Bukitsudo, or extracurricular activities, are an integral part of the Japanese education system. They go beyond the regular academic curriculum and play a significant role in shaping students' experiences and personal development. Bukitsudo encompass a wide range of activities, from sports clubs like soccer and basketball to cultural clubs like music, tea ceremony, and calligraphy. There is something for everyone, allowing students to explore their passions and pursue their interests outside of the classroom. Bukitsudo activities are typically organized and supervised by teachers, but most clubs function through their own student councils and officers. This allows students to maintain order and regulations among themselves. Number 11. Cram Schools 
Cram schools, or juku, are supplemental institutions that play a significant role in the academic journeys of Japanese students, particularly as they prepare for the crucial entrance exams that determine admission to prestigious high schools. Unlike in many other parts of the world where high school admissions are primarily based on academic records or recommendations, Japan has a distinctive system where students are typically required to take entrance exams. These exams assess their knowledge, skills, and aptitude in various subjects. For this reason, many students in Japan attend cram schools to help them excel and ace their exams. However, it is important to note that cram schools are not as hellish as some might think. Number 10. Bowing. Bowing is a fundamental gesture of respect in Japan, deeply rooted in the country's traditions and etiquette. Students learn to bow as part of their education on manners and respect for others. It is common to see students bow to their teachers and upper-level students. There are various types of bows, each with a unique meaning and level of formality. For example, the ashaku is an informal bow used as a greeting. The saikiriai is a deep and formal bow reserved for high formal occasions and showing utmost respect. Bowing is a way to pay respect to people and deities, show gratitude, apologize, and convey other emotions. It is considered polite to bow even when no one is watching, as it signifies that a person is respectful even in private. Number 9. Randasiru Bags Randasiru is a traditional Japanese school backpack made of sturdy leather or synthetic materials. It is known for its distinctive rectangular shape, firm frame, and ample storage space. Randasiru bags are also water-resistant and equipped with adjustable straps, a top handle, and multiple compartments for organization. Randasiru bags have a long history dating back to the Edo era when Western reform came to Japan. At that time, students began using leather backpacks inspired by European designs. Randasiru bags evolved over the years to become the durable and functional backpacks they are today. Randasiru bags are incredibly popular among Japanese students, and for good reason. They are designed to effectively distribute the weight of several textbooks and other heavy materials, making them comfortable to carry even on long days of school. Additionally, Randasiru bags are built to last for years, with many students using the same bag from elementary school through high school. Number 8. Uniforms are a must. School uniforms in Japan are considered essential. The vast majority of schools, especially at the high school level, require students to wear uniforms rather than civilian clothing. Uniforms serve multiple purposes in the Japanese education system. They promote inclusivity and reduce the pressure to conform to specific trends or societal expectations. Uniforms also foster a sense of identity and pride in one's school. The distinctive design and colors of school uniforms help students feel connected to their educational institution and develop a sense of belonging. Additionally, uniforms contribute to a disciplined and focused learning environment. By wearing uniforms, students are mentally prepared for the school day and understand the importance of adhering to rules and regulations. Putting on a uniform can serve as a daily reminder of the responsibilities and expectations associated with being a student. Number 7. School Lunches School lunches in Japan, or Kyushoku, are carefully planned, prepared, and serve to ensure students receive a well-balanced and wholesome meal during their busy school day. Kyushoku typically consists of rice, fish, vegetables, and soup, and is often served with milk or tea. In the past, many Japanese schools required students to eat everything on their plates, but this practice has been largely discontinued due to health and allergy concerns. In addition to providing students with a nutritious meal, school lunches in Japan also play an important role in teaching students about responsibility and teamwork. Every day, a new student is assigned to be the lunch student, who is responsible for helping to serve and distribute food to their classmates. This is a valuable learning experience for students, as it helps them to develop important skills such as leadership, cooperation, and time management. Number 6 parents rarely bring their kids to school. In Japan, it is common for children to walk or take the train to school by themselves, even at a young age. This is because Japan is a very safe country with low crime rates and a strong sense of community. Japan's well-developed transportation system also plays a role in ensuring the safety of young commuters. Trains and buses are known for their punctuality, reliability, and extensive coverage. 
Stations and routes are carefully designed with safety in mind, featuring clear signage, well-lit areas, and dedicated spaces for children. Perhaps most importantly, Japanese citizens inherently know how to help children. Children are always the priority in Japan, and the government ensures that pedestrian infrastructures and public utilities are safe for them. Of course, some places in Japan are exceptions, but in most communities, the environment is incredibly safe for children to walk to school alone. Number 5. Punctuality is upheld at all times. Punctuality is highly valued in Japanese schools and is considered a sign of respect, professionalism, and reliability. Students are expected to arrive at school on time for all classes and activities, and those who are late may be penalized. On days with a morning ceremony, the gates are closed at a specific time and students who come in late are not allowed to enter the school premises. This strict rule of punctuality is designed to teach students the importance of being on time and to prepare them for the expectations of Japanese society. Number 4. Swimming lessons are required. Swimming is considered a vital life skill and a crucial component of physical education in Japan. All students are required to take swimming lessons, regardless of age or ability. This requirement stems from the country's strong emphasis on water safety and the belief that every individual should be equipped with basic swimming skills. Japan is an island nation with abundant natural water resources, including rivers, lakes, and coastal areas. By teaching children to swim at a young age, they develop the ability to navigate and enjoy these environments safely. Additionally, in the event of a natural disaster, such as a tsunami or flood, swimming skills can be life-saving. Number 3. Boy Haircuts The two-block haircut, characterized by closely shaved or short sides with longer hair on top, has become popular among young adults and teens in recent years. However, many Japanese schools, especially those in Tokyo, have banned this hairstyle. School institutions argue that the two-block haircut may be seen as overly casual or unrefined for the school setting. Some people also believe that it is untidy and unkempt. However, there are also those who believe that the two-block haircut is an appropriate haircut for students. They argue that haircuts do not define a student and that students should be allowed to express themselves in ways that do not significantly disrupt or affect their academic performance. In recent years, some Japanese schools have become more liberated and are allowing students to express themselves in ways that were previously prohibited. Number 2. No tights, even in winter. Japanese schoolgirls are prohibited from wearing tights, even in the winter, despite wearing incredibly short skirts. This rule is often met with confusion and criticism, both from locals and foreigners alike. There are a few reasons why some Japanese schools have this rule. Some argue that tights might encourage students to wear wild and distracting patterns that might not be appropriate for an educational institution. Others claim that tights prevent students from being too relaxed and losing focus on class discussions. However, many people believe that the rule is outdated and pointless. They argue that there is no evidence to suggest that tights have a negative impact on students' academic performance or behavior. Additionally, they point out that the rule is uncomfortable and even dangerous for students in the winter, as it can lead to hypothermia. In recent years, there has been a growing movement of female students protesting against this rule. However, many schools still have it in place. Number 1. No part-time jobs. Many Japanese schools ban part-time jobs for students, believing that they should prioritize their studies and extracurricular activities without the added burden of a job. Schools emphasize the importance of dedicating time and energy to academics to ensure students can achieve their full potential. From their perspective, part-time work can potentially distract students from their primary responsibilities and hinder their academic progress. While some students argue that having a part-time job can provide valuable life experiences and help develop skills such as time management and responsibility, schools often maintain a strict stance on this matter. They want students to focus solely on their studies and extracurricular commitments, viewing these as crucial steps toward a successful future. As a result of this policy, many students who take on part-time jobs often keep it a secret, only confiding in their most trusted friends. They fear being found out by teachers or school authorities who may impose disciplinary actions for violating the school's regulations. Do you think any of these rules should become the new norm? Which of these rules wouldn't you mind being adopted in your country? 
Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Also check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.